Welcome to Happy Wolf Art and the fourth tale in this series of conversion tales of Germanic warlords from the early medieval period. Uh, this book that contains the four tales is called Medieval Tales from the Bard Iron Tongue, and it is a print on de demand available through Amazon. Uh, the link will be down in the description below. Uh, what I will do is initially read the historical note to give everybody a feel for the background literature that's available for Vidukint. Little is known about the historical Vidukint, but what sources we have tell us that he incited war and rebellion against the Franks for 13 years. Because the Saxons didn't have a traditionally literate culture until they merged with the Frankish Empire, no written sources from the Saxons' own hands exist concerning these turbulent years. The Royal Frankish Annals list Vidukint as the primary leader of the Saxons during the first half of the Saxon Wars between 772 and 785 AD. After he converted to Christianity, Vidukint disappears from the historical record. Various legends, however, record details of his life, and these stories in small part provide some inspiration for the following tale. Historically speaking, Vidukin's battles and conversion were pivotal events for European history because without them the Saxons may not have converted to Christianity as soon as they did, and the line of Saxon kings who would later rule and shape the Holy Roman Empire, might have remained regional lords. Here is a map of Europe and sort of the main plain fields. You can see Francia, which is modern-day France. And a lot of the battles took place initially in Westphalia, uh, near Paderborn, Eresburg, and as the Franks pushed further east, they crossed the Weser River to the Elbe. And then you see the Wends. The Wends uh, is a Slavic, some people think a possibly mixed Slavic Germanic tribal period, but or group, um, but historically they're viewed as Slavs. So um, this is the map of where all the events in the story take place. And as with each of the stories, there are character lists. So if you don't know who, for example, Abio is, it's Vidu Kent's close friend. Okay, and there's also information on people groups in uh, the story. So here we have the Wends, Slavs living on the eastern border of the Saxons and Franks. And they play a relatively minor role in this story, but they are present. There are place names also. So if you're not sure where Colonia is, or if, if that's Cologne or Köln, as in German, the modern day city of Cologne, located on the Rhine River, right? These help you sort of find some of these places on a map and give you a little bit of background information. And then there's also cultural reference references um, that people may or may not understand that are alluded to in the story. So um, if you see, for example, the city of God, what is that? Well, it's a book written by St. Augustine. Okay. Um, Storm Charger, what is that? Something in the story. It's a fictional name for Vidukint's horse. Okay. So a lot of uh, warriors named their uh, swords, their weapons, animals, and so forth. So um, what I'll do is read from the first couple paragraphs of the story so you get a flavor of the story. And if you're interested, you can purchase these stories in a digital form individually, or you can purchase the paperback altogether. It's relatively inexpensive. I believe it's around $10 now. So, All right, Vidukint, Lord of the Saxons. My name is Vidukint. Lord of the Saxons, some know me as the Bane of Charles, King of the Franks, because I waged war against him for thirteen years. Vidukint, but the name by which most know me is, however, neither my birth name nor my Christian name. Rather, it was a term of endearment 
given to me from my late foster father. May God keep him. How I came to have a foster father is a tale in and of itself, so I will tell it here. But more importantly, the years I spent with him made me who I was and who I am, who I, sh I would become. As an infant, I cried incessantly. My biological father hated me for that. To him, it was evidence of a weak disposition. A hardened Saxon warrior like my father only wanted the toughest son, no wailer, no shedder of tears. So he ordered my mother to, quote, set me out. Essentially, abandoning me to the wilderness until starvation withered me or some forest beast gnawed on my bones. All right, and that's where I'll stop. Um, it goes into a little bit of Vidukin's family background, what little is known about that, and then it gets into his leadership role as uh, a leader of the Saxons against uh, the Franks and their ever-expanding uh, empire. So here's a little information on the back side of the book if you want to pause the video and check it out, and a little blurb about me there at the bottom and um, my work and uh, profession. That's a little picture of uh, my daughter when she was younger and I surfing uh, Ventura C Street in California. So anyways, thanks for checking this out. If you're interested, it's on um, Amazon. And if you know somebody that may be interested in this, uh, please do share or consider just passing on the information. All right. Thanks a lot.